today in this session we'll see how to make a gpu to work by writing a program in cuda we have seen what are the various programming approaches that can be used in order to make your uh, gpu device to work so in today's session we'll see how to write a basic uh, cuda program now if uh, when you go for this cuda as i told you this is compute unified device architecture uh, which will make a gpu to work right and this is just a platform so we are using this platform in order to make a gpu to work and we have uh, n number of manufacturers so this nvidia gpu will be working under the platform of cuda now if it is a single processor if you have only cpu you know which process is being executed by that particular cpu but when you go for your gpu and we have been telling that multiple threads will be used we'll see the actual internal architecture of, of the cuda where you have multiple threads so t0 and t0 are, are two threads which are related to block 0 similarly you have block 1 with two threads block 2 with two threads so each individual threads are grouped together and we call it as a block and we have multiple blocks so all the multiple blocks grouped together we call it as a grid so this can be even known as a thread hierarchy how the threads are being organized so group of threads is a block group of blocks is a grid now this is the actual hierarchy which we have to make use while we are uh, going to write a program in cuda so the actual execution unit when you see this is nothing but your thread so this thread whatever you are writing will be executed on a device known as a core and combination of all the threads we call it as a block and this block will be executed by a streaming multi processor in other terms this can be known as a processing element and this we call it as a compute unit this is nothing but your compute unit and combination of all the blocks together we call it as a grid and this is executed by your total gpu so this is the actual version of how the threads are being executed individually on a single core having seen this we'll just go for the hardware view and the software view of the execution of your cuda programs in the hardware view we have seen that we have a gpu device internally it has a core and each multiple cores will be grouped together in a multi processor right and you have its own memory which we call it as a multi processor and you have your gpu memory so this can be your compute unit and this is your processing element and this is your gpu device or we can call it as a compute device when you want this particular core to work coming to your software view when you want this core to work you have to provide some software so thread is nothing but will be executed on a core as we have seen earlier and all the threads multiple threads which are grouped under a block will be executed by a compute unit and each of this will have its own specific memory so this is a difference between a hardware view and a software view either the software or the hardware alone will not function so you require a combination of both you want some output from a device so you require the corresponding software also so whatever program totally you are giving for a gpu to execute we can even call them as the kernel functions now having seen a block and a thread here uh, we'll just take a look at how it has been organized so assume it is organized as a one dimensional array where you have four blocks so this is your block 0 this is your block 1 block 2 block 3 and each of the block is having eight threads internally 0 to 7 are numbered as eight threads now if i want to know the id of the block so i need to use it as block i should be capital idx dot x i'll tell you when we move on to your uh, thread hierarchy in detail why am i giving it as x so as of now since it is one dimensional we need to oh, you only use it as block idx dot x so each of the block will be given an id starting from 0 to 3 if i have four blocks and if similarly each thread should be identified uniquely so each thread id can be given by thread idx dot x ranging from 0 to 7 where you have eight threads now we'll see a basic cuda program of printing a statement hello on to your desktop if you just see a normal c program i'm writing a function definition this is your function definition where you are just including a statement hello world 
and coming to your main method you are just making a call to this particular function it goes to the function and just prints hello world so you get hello world printed onto your monitor for once when i want to write a CUDA program here you have a return type to your function as it is but before your return type you need to associate a keyword known as global so when you want to write a global before the global these are nothing but two underscore symbols two underscore global and followed by two underscores again space you need to specify the return type of the function as void and the name of the function name of the function and you write you specify the operation to be done by the function here i'm only printing a statement onto the monitor uh, so this happens to be your function definition now when i want this function to be executed we start with a main method so there is no you are not writing a new programming language here we are only making the additions in your normal c program so this is your main function where now i need to call my function so the difference between the calling your normal c program and your uh, cuda program is nothing but here cuda hello is my function you will be writing it as it is cuda underscore hello and after your function name you have to use three angular brackets so these are known as your angular brackets angular bracket and within the angular brackets it takes two parameters first parameter is related to number of blocks and the second parameter is related to number of threads so in each of the angular bracket you need to pass number of threads and number of blocks so here when you go see the pictorial representation internally two blocks would be created this is block 0 and this is block 1 because the ID will start with 0 and each of the block has only one thread here only one thread and this thread ID of each block thread IDX would be 0 and since it is pertaining to your second block the thread ID will again start with 0. So this is the actual representation when you are seeing so when I am writing 2 comma 1 internally two threads are being created and the number of times this function would be calling is nothing but number of blocks into number of threads so if i have two blocks and each block has one thread my function would be executed twice so one single function one single function will make the operation to be done twice so whenever it sees this angular brackets the cpu will understand that it is not the job to be done by the cpu it has to be given to your gpu so the control from the cpu will be passed to the gpu and the gpu by seeing this global keyword it understands that it has to execute this function and this statement hello world from the gpu would be printed onto your monitor and how many times you get this statement printed onto your monitor two times because it is two blocks and each block has one thread and this function will be repeated for twice and once you are done with it the last function you need to include in your main method is nothing but CUDA device synchronize why is that i need to go for including this now when as we have seen cpu will just give the instruction to the gpu and it will not wait for the gpu gpu continues with its work but if you want the gpu to wait till the gpu has performed its operation we have to include it as CUDA device synchronize by default the communication between your cpu and the gpu is asynchronous in nature if you want to make it synchronous we have to go for including CUDA device synchronize assume i haven't included CUDA device synchronize as a last statement in that case whatever printf statement you are using here it will not be printed onto your monitor and you will not be getting any output to be visible and since you have a return type for your function you are making it as return zero so the things you have to remember in this is whenever you are writing a CUDA function definition uh, you have to go for two underscore symbols use a global keyword and after that two underscores again the return type of the function would be by default always void and mention the name of the function and perform the operation whatever you want to do a number of times this operation would be repeated depends upon the number of blocks and the number of threads you are passing in the argument of your function call so the basic difference here is whenever you are calling a function after your function call you have three angular brackets embedded with number of blocks and number of threads
that was a simple program where you are printing a statement onto your monitor now in addition to the statement we printed onto your monitor i just want the thread id as well as the block id also to be printed and we have seen if you want a block id to be printed it is block idx dot x and for thread id it is thread idx dot x so your execution will start with your main method so first it prints hello onto your hello from cpu so this will be printed onto your monitor and whenever this hello and angular brackets are present here so the gp cpu will understand that this is a function called to your gpu so the control will be transferred to the gpu so the device this so this we call it as a device code and the gpu will come into picture so before that you see how many times you want it so how many blocks are there you have two blocks and block id will be ranging from b0 to b1 and each block has two threads so when i have two threads here the id of your thread will be t0 and t1 and when you are moving on to your next block the id of the thread will again start with t0 and t1 so these are your ids so block id would be 0 and 1 block 0 and block 1 because we have two blocks and each block the thread id will range from t0 t1 and this also has t0 and t1 so number of times the function would be executed is number of blocks into number of threads so it would be 2 into 2 means 4 times so i am not using any loop statement since i am getting this statement printed onto the monitor for 4 times so first when i execute the program here you could see the output first you get the output from the cpu followed by the four outputs from your gpu where this is related to block 0 thread 0 so this is related to block 0 and thread 0 this is related to the same block but thread 1 and the next two statements are pertaining to block 1 thread 0 and this one will be block 1 and thread 1 so without using a loop statement you are just making you are calling you were calling it as 2 comma 2 so the statement would be printed four times onto the monitor so this is a simple program where you are just printing a statement onto the monitor now when you want to see the output of it the execution can be done by using your collab notebook you just go for using your collab open a new notebook and when you ha you have a runtime option where you change it to hardware accelerator gpu so instead of your cpu you make your runtime to be changed to your gpu and you check the version of cuda that is available in your system by using exclamatory nvcc hyphen version so this is nothing but two underscore symbols version it will tell you what version of cuda is available on your system and and when you want to go for installing your CUDA I mean libraries for your CUDA program execution, this would be the installation step from, I mean, you are just downloading it from your GitHub, the available uh, repository. And the, uh, after the plugin is being installed, you will be getting the corresponding statements onto your monitor. And you need to even load the plugin required for running your CUDA program. So once it is done, uh, whatever code you write it, that should be written in a code cell you have a text cell and a code cell so you paste your code or write your code in a code cell and run it so when you run it you finally get your output so before you run it your program in the code cell you go for setting up this libraries so that your code would be run so this is a basic uh, uh, knowledge required for writing a CUDA program in the later classes we'll see how to go for performing various scientific operations using the same CUDA